Hey everyone, welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking, where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. My name is Heather, and today we're doing another freezer meal for my hairstylist. Now, some of you know, if you watched the last freezer meal video, I have a hairstylist who is having a surprise baby, and I want to stock her freezer full of meals so that when that baby comes, that's the last thing she has to worry about. Most of these meals can go into your Instant Pot absolutely frozen, and that's why I'm gonna do them for her. So today's meal is white chicken chili, and you guys, this one is excellent. When I did my freezer meal workshop back in California, it was one of the most requested repeats for the next workshop. So without further ado, let's collect our ingredients and get started. So here's what you're gonna need. One tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, one medium onion, diced, two cups cooked chicken, two cans of great northern beans, drained and rinsed, one can of corn, drained, one can or four ounces of chopped green chilies, half of a teaspoon of cumin, half of a teaspoon of oregano, 32 ounces or four cups of chicken broth, half of a teaspoon of salt or to taste, half of a teaspoon of pepper or to taste, and the juice of one lime. Optionally, you can have cilantro, sour cream, pepper jack cheese, avocado, and tortilla chips to serve. Okay, so if you watched the last freezer meal preparation day, um, you'll remember that I used this very large mason jar and I got my stuff stuck in it. This time I'm actually gonna use it again, but I'm gonna wait to pour the broth in until we already remove it because I think it will still work as long as I follow that. Cause I really wanna be able to use this jar because it will fit everything. So. If you are making this for your freezer, go ahead and get your bags ready. You'll either need a couple Ziploc bags that are freezer safe or you can use your food saver. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my food saver here and I'm gonna pull out enough bags so that I have plenty of room to seal it. Oh, you know what? I didn't label my bag, hold on. This is actually a very important step because once I get all of the food in there, sometimes the bag gets a little wet and writing on a wet bag is never, uh, never ideal. Now, let's get it into our jar. Okay, so the first couple times I did this recipe, I actually uh, caramelized the onions before they went in. However, I then became a little lazy and stopped caramelizing the onions and I literally didn't taste the difference. So if you like the taste of caramelized onions, caramelize your onions, but I am all about quick, easy, and into the freezer, so I'm not gonna do it. So into our container, we're gonna put our onion, and that's a whole medium onion, which is about a cup and a half, and the olive oil that we would have used to brown the onions, that's gonna go in too. We're also going to add all of our great northern beans, our green chilies, our corn, the juice of one lime, all of your chicken, and it is cooked chicken. Make sure your cooked chicken is cooked. Now, before we put any of the seasonings or the broth in, we're gonna take it out of this jar. Okay, let's get this out. See, this will be so much easier because there's no juice in it and everything is squishable and no juice is falling out. Come on, come on. See, there we go. And now it sits up on its own so I don't have to worry about it falling over. Right, rolling down the top again because I don't want to get it wet at all. And I'm gonna put in the spices. So this is oregano, cumin, salt, and pepper. And I used half a teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of pepper, but you do you. If your broth is a little too salty for you, definitely use less salt. You can salt it at the end as well. Because this is a meal for someone else, I went with the minimum amount of salt so that she could salt it the way she fe feels the need. And since chicken soup season has not quite arrived yet, this is just chicken stock I made last night using better than bouillon, works just fine. All right, and into the bag, our chicken stock is gonna go. And I try to pour it over the top of the seasonings so that that does the mix for me, okay? And that's it. This freezer meal is done. Let's get it sealed up and into the freezer. Okay, so let's get it into our machine. 
So we're gonna make sure it's resting on the counter, put it into the channel in our machine and make sure it stays in the channel and that it's nice and straight. I'm gonna turn my machine on. I'm going to put it to moist so it doesn't suck all of that broth up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get it started by pushing this button here. And once I see it start to suck up some of the broth, I go ahead and cancel it to seal. That way it doesn't suck up more broth than I want it to. And then we will check our seal and it looks really nicely sealed there. Actually, I see a little bubble in the seal and that's due to the fact that there is so much liquid in this. So don't be afraid of resealing again because you definitely want a good seal on your bag before it goes into the, for the freezer. But the way that you can tell it's sealed is that the line goes all the way across and you can't see any of those little um, textures all the way across. You have to see it all the way across. All right, and there we have it. It is all ready for the freezer. Now, um, there are two ways that you can freeze this. You can freeze it by laying it down and freeze it like this so that whenever it thaws, it thaws really quickly. Or you can actually freeze it inside a pot that is the same size as your instant pot. So for example, let's push all of this down so that's all at the bottom of our bag. And then what I'm gonna do is get a pot I know is smaller or the same size as my instant pot. And I am going to freeze it in this size right here. So this is gonna go straight into my freezer like this so that whenever I open it up and cut it out, it fits right in because if you watch the other video, you know that I had to kind of like break it in half and try to fit it in there and that was fine. But uh, this is a kind of a nicer way of doing it, especially for her because then she'll just have to rip off the top and put it in. By the way, she already had the first, I don't know if I mentioned, I think I did, that I'm giving these to her ahead of time so that she can try them out and know what's in her freezer once the baby comes. So this meal will actually go to her this week. Um, so I'm excited for her to try this one because she's gonna really like it. Okay, into the freezer it's gonna go just like this. But you're in luck. I have another one in my freezer and we're ready to cook it. All right, let's clean up and get this in the freezer. And here we are, let's get this frozen one right into the Instant Pot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut off the top here and we are going to unwrap this and get it right in. Now you'll notice I did not freeze this one in the pot like I did for her because number one, I didn't have the room in my freezer for two pots. Um, and number two, I was lazy this, the day that I made this one um, and I was just like, oh, we're just gonna get it in. And you'll see, it's just, it's fine. Well, there we go. And as you can see, it does kind of stick up out of the pot a little bit. This is only slightly a problem um, because you'll want to make sure your lid can shut. Nope. Okay, so what do we do? What do we do when it's too big? We chip it off. So I have a meat tenderizer here and I'm just going to chip it a little bit. See, this is why you gotta make sure that it fits into your Instant Pot. There we go. Okay, it only took a second, only took a little bit to get it in there. I only had to chip off a tiny bit, but that's why it's kinda ideal that you get it down inside something that is the same size as your pot. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set the pot for 10 minutes and we're gonna quick release and it's gonna be done. So here we go, pressure cook to 10 minutes and I'll see you back here when that's ready to be released. All right, time is up. It's time to let Walter release the pressure and then we'll get it dressed and on the dinner table. All right, it's down out of pressure. Let's open up and see what we got. And check it out. And look at this amazing white chicken chili. Now, two things here. You can make this creamy, however, that increases the amount of calories that is in this soup. Right now, the soup is so, so, so calorie conscious. So if you're gonna add some cream, 
You can do it right now, make it a little creamier, but it is great the way it is because we're gonna add some sour cream, some cheese, some cilantro, some avocado, and some chips. So then it becomes not so calorie conscious, but just as a soup itself, it's really a, a nice soup. So we're gonna ladle it out and put it right into our bowl. All right, and now we are gonna dress it up and make it beautiful. So the first thing that I like to do is take my chips and crush them into it. I know some people are like, why are you crushing those chips in there? It's a great texture, tastes amazing. Now we're gonna take some cheese, sprinkle it right over the top. We are gonna take some sour cream, dollop it right over the top. Take a little cilantro, if you are a cilantro lover, and we are going to tear it into pieces all over our soup. And then last but not least, we are gonna take our avocado and fan it out on our food and stick it right in. White chicken chili, oh my goodness. Freezer meal of champions. All right, let's dig in and I can show you what it tastes like or tell you what it tastes like, but I can tell you right now, it's delicious. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know what it is about this meal that makes it taste so good, but it really does. It's so simple, but it tastes so good. The lime that you add to it really does give it that nice acidic kick and the uh, broth and just everything, how it marries together. This is so, so good. I think I make it probably three or four times a year and sometimes I make it during the summer on really cool days because it is just so good. And what is really fascinating is that because it went into the instant pot frozen, that corn still has a little bit of bite to it, which is fantastic because it's not mushy at all. It is so good. I should stop eating though so that I can just wrap up this video. Okay, oh, it's so good. Everything about every flavor that's in my mouth is making me super happy. It is the ultimate comfort food. It is so delicious. It is the perfect beginning of the soup season soup because it's not quite a soup, but it's not quite a chili, because I mean, it's, it's called white chicken chili, but you guys, it is so dang good. I know for a fact that my hairstylist and her family are going to love this meal. So, and I think that if you're a soup lover and you like beans, you're gonna love this meal too. And it was so easy, right? All right, you guys, well, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. I do videos several times a week and I'm always looking for the next adventure. Um, right now I am doing a series called the 12 skills that every home cook um, needs to know kind of thing, or I feel like needs to know. Some of the things are things that I actually need to know and some are things that I actually do know. So I thought I would share that adventure with you I'm also doing a freezer meal, as you know, this is the freezer meal one, um, for my hairstylist. So you'll see a few more of those before the year is out. And yeah, but if you have any ideas for me, leave me a comment because I'm always up for the next adventure and maybe your comment will be my next one. All right, you guys. Well, I'll see you on the next one. Bye. I'm taking this with me because it's that good. No, but really gluten-free, easy, done in 10 minutes. There's no reason you can't make this. I'm burning my hand. Oh, okay. I'm going to the table.